Okay, today we're taking this Ford 88 and a whole bunch of parts from Speedway and Barnes four wheel drive and stuff and making it fit a Beretta. Hey, look at this here. So all my white paint chips are filled in right now. Looks pretty mint. Taking measurements, there's some Black Friday sales and stuff. Uh, getting my suspension links figured out for the rear end here. It looks like uh, Mustang control arms actually might work really well. And Barnes four wheel drive is having a sale where I can get, pick up some uh, threaded adjustable poly ends um, and make the Mustang arms adjustable. That way, if my uh, mounts on the rear axle aren't perfect, I can adjust that out of there and uh, be in pretty good shape. Okay, and I've got about a full foot of room to do an actual coil over here, which I think is the route that I'm going to go rather than try and dick around reusing these Beretta springs and doing a perch for them, that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> I think that'll be a good option. Hey, Wiener, you're not helping. So the status of the Beretta right now is waiting for a spot in my old man's garage. With a whole bunch of Mopar shit and actually a 69 Firebird that will be nice. But he's working on fixing up an old two post lift, which uh, would be a beautiful thing for the Beretta. So there's going to be a little bit of welding overhead with the Beretta project, uh, doing the floor, that sort of thing. And uh, this will make that a hell of a lot easier. Plus, doing some work in my old man's garage here. That frees up my garage for the Camaro. So I know there's a bunch of videos. You can see the Camaro just sitting in the corner of the garage uh, with nothing happening because to really do body work on that thing, it consumes the whole garage. Uh, and you can't really have anything else going on. Um, but with, uh, with the Breda in here, that will help me make progress on both of them. I've done better in my life, but probably also did worse. Second side here came out looking a little bit better. They usually do though, right? These ends here are made for quarter inch wall tube, and I got eighth inch tube. So it looks pretty goofy. Uh, so what I'm doing is turning these down. You can see this rod end was made for eighth inch wall tube. This is one that I turned down for eighth inch wall tube. And that's what we want right here. And right here's the finishing touch. That looks beautiful. I bought these Jeep mounts here from uh, Barnes Four Wheel Drive thinking they'd save me some time on my lower control arm brackets. But they're angled the way these are set up and they're also the wrong tube diameter. So I made some marks, cut these up a little bit, straighten them out, make them work for this Ford 88. Drilled some adjustability into these bad boys because right now is the time to do it. Uh, that'll help me be able to adjust my anti-squat. All right, off with these brackets. You don't need that Ford junk. This axle's never going back in an Explorer. All right, that's all the Explorer brackets cut off. Now we just gotta grind them down smooth. Even with a grind disc and then a 60 grit flap wheel, this takes forever cleaning off these brackets. Okay, I just checked and I got my pinion angle. This is pointed up three degrees, two and a half degrees because it's upside down. So now I'm gonna get my holes here, vertical. That's that little bit of adjustment that I drilled in there. I'll be in pretty good shape.
That's some fine Sharpie work there. When it needs to be accurate, it's got to be Sharpie. The old icrometer here says this looks pretty good. Remember, the Camaro's striving for perfection. The Brutta's just striving to be done. And these are pretty straight and true, and I think they will work for the application. Before I forget here, I gotta tap these for the Explorer brake hoses since I chopped off the leaf spring mounts. Not ideal to have it rocking back and forth, really, but oh, yeah, that's crooked as shit. Very nice. Alright, it's official. That ain't going nowhere. Okay, here's a little preview. I burned in the end on one of these tubes here. So you can see I got a little bit of room side to side. I wanted to be able to have room for that small washer so that this will be able to rotate a little bit because the rear end's gonna have to go back and forth. And if that was captured too tight with the polyurethane, I don't think that would uh, articulate very well. But uh, this allows me to get my placement just right so it doesn't bind. I mean, obviously, if my mounts aren't perfect left to right in the car, is going to be figured out by the pannered bar, but I'll be able to adjust the lower control arms to make sure they don't bind if I didn't get my mounts just perfect. All right, so here's the coilover setup I ended up buying. Uh, I got them separate. Comes with the shock and the mount kit itself, and then the coils. You can get whatever. Uh, well, you got to get the length to match these shocks, but you can get whatever spring rate you want. I got 200 pound, but uh, this little body here has a snap ring that goes on. Once the snap ring goes on, you slide on your coilover adjuster, then your spring goes on. It's got this hat, comes on there. <coughs> and then this is a diaper pin, they call it. Uh, I'm probably gonna find the cotter pin or something that's not quite as shitty as this is. Um, but uh, that holds it all together. They can use 5 eighths or half inch. They come with a little sleeve for half inch hardware they're kind of an ass ache to get in there even lubing them up good but uh this doesn't have a whole lot of travel let's see so there's only five inches of travel in the shock but uh i don't think that's really a big deal it's probably less than a factory beretta but mine's gonna be lowered anyway so whatever but uh i think they'll work out all right All right, now both of these are ready to rock. I do have shock brackets here. Uh, these are gonna go on the body side. I was thinking about doing a piece of angle iron to span all the way across between the two brackets, then weld these on there. I was thinking about using these on the axle. Uh, I was just kind of getting a pair to see what I could come up with, but I can't get these far enough forward for it to really work right uh, because they need to be forward of the axle center line and down. And when I did that, I had a clearance issue where they were gonna hit on there. So I bought a couple of adjustable brackets. They should be here in a little bit, uh, but that'll give me a ton of flexibility. I think there's like four inches of uh, adjustability in the brackets that I bought, so should make life easy there. Since this is all custom stuff, it's nice to have the adjustability to be able to dial in right where I need it. Um, since uh, you're flying by the seat of the pants a little bit. I mean, I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on, but uh, tweaking will probably be necessary once it's all together and driving.